Hello everyone, welcome back for another Star Trek, the official Starships collection. Uh, before me, I have issue number 64, the Phoenix, seen in Star Trek First Contact. Um, and of course the magazine is here, and the ship is also nearby, so we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, just a little apology, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to show you this earlier. Been kind of caught up dealing with life and stuff like that, so... Um, now I finally have a chance to uh, give you a look at it. So anyway, there it is, issue 64. Really nice uh, image of the Phoenix on the cover there, along with some uh, basic info. Launched in the year 2063, a few decades from now, uh, with a crew of only three and uh, 20 meters long and can only go as fast as warp one. And turning the page, you have the usual how to uh, put the model onto the stand, as well as more basic uh, brief information there. Specification, uh, is an, it is an experimental warp ship invented by Zephram Cochran, again launched on April 5th, 2063, 20 meters long without the rocket, uh, with a crew of three and only can go as fast as warp one. Turning the page, uh, another cool image of the ship there, this time from the aft view, with some text about it, and there's Zephram Cochran, himself you turn the page and you have more screenshots and imagery and text from the uh, movie first contact as well as whatever information was mentioned on star trek enterprise over the course of its uh, run there and you got your uh, centerfold showing you where things are where the various components are as well as trivia information in the side columns there and here's a section on the design process of the Phoenix, which is pretty cool. Uh, basically, it started out as a United States Air Force missile um, and was slowly converted to look Star Trek-y in some ways by adding like, you know, warp nacelles and pylons, etc. cetera. Um, and I thought I did read in here somewhere that this was, uh, let me see. Uh, there was a part of it that was named after another rocket that is actually in existence by the Air Force and uh, the, the design team went to them and they said that they had no plans to build a stage 5 rocket or whatever the name is and so they named it after that as of being in the future so that's pretty cool turn the page you have some conceptual artwork there as well as more text and uh, here is a section on the costumes for first contact which is interesting, I guess. Uh, it's more of a magazine filler than anything else to me. Um, nothing that I don't think we should, we, have, we don't already know or hasn't been revealed by this point in history and time. More conceptual costume art work there. And there is the uh, Phoenix again, the on-screen appearance page basically. It's appeared in Star Trek First Contact, only in First Contact. Um, it has been referenced about a dozen times, uh, not only from Star Trek First Contact, but also in Star Trek Enterprise, the prequel series set 100 years before uh, the original series and the events and the adventures of James T. Kirk, etc. Um, and I think it was mentioned on Voyager once or twice as kind of like a throwback to the episodes, uh, to the movie. And uh, so yeah, oh, also that uh, Air Force rocket that I was referring to earlier uh, is actually called the Titan rocket. Um, currently the Air Force had Titan rockets one through four and uh, the Titan V rocket is what they renamed it to um, in honor of the lineage of uh, rockets in the Air Force. Um, so that's kind of cool. And coming up, which I should have in a few days because I got the shipping confirmation from Eagle Moss, the issue 65, the Zindi Aquatic Cruiser, as well as the SS Raven, you know, Star Trek Voyager. So I really look forward to this batch and sharing it with you. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's the magazine and the back of course has the ship there. So putting the magazine aside and let's get to the model itself. So here it is, the Phoenix itself and all its glory. And so let's get this bad boy out of the box, shall we? Whoops. 
and here is the Phoenix. And my first impression of it is it's pretty cool. Um, the majority of the model is primarily composed of plastic, although I think part portions of the cockpit and others are metal, especially in the aft section. But the majority of it is uh, plastic. As usual, the warp nacelles have the blue uh, blue plastic for the grills there and the Bastard collectors or whatever are orange or red there and they can have a little bit of a nice glow to them when you put them up against the right amount of light so that's kind of cool um, unfortunately the nacelles do not retract back inside um, it would have been cool but I can already imagine the amount of parts problems and other issues associated with this model in particular if they had gone that route and I don't think thus far they've done any of the models that have moving parts um, or movable wings or movable nacelles or anything like that uh, so far and I, and I do hope that continues because I'm pretty sure like I said it would be a lot of problems if they went that way I can already see the Facebook um, messages and stuff from people saying oh it's broken and stuff like that so it's probably better that they don't do it that way and after all it's just gonna sit on the shelf a certain way um, so anyway this is a very nice nicely detailed model um, pretty cool um, and interestingly enough this is probably the closest thing that we'll have to a Star Trek ship that is in the real world uh, anytime soon if it ever were to happen that way it would probably look something possibly maybe quite possibly like this hopefully and uh, so yeah very nice model got the bottom view there your top view got your side within the cells a little bit crooked but nothing too bad oh fixed it wow awesome got your other side there front view and the aft view with the main thruster back there. Um, the only thing that I can say that I don't like is that you can clearly see the line going right down smack in the middle of the thing. Uh, it almost kind of takes the effect away, but the, it's all right, it's not that big of a deal. Other than that, it's a very nice model. The detail is very nice, the paint is very well done. Um, my model didn't come in pieces, which is uh, definitely a good thing. So yeah. That's the Phoenix, seen in Star Trek First Contact and referenced about a dozen times on Enterprise, etc. And uh, next time I look forward to sharing with you the Zindi Aquatic Cruiser and the SS Raven, which I should be getting very shortly now in a couple of days. Um, so I hope you guys all are staying safe and being well out there. I know things are a little bit dangerous, uh, especially overseas in Europe right now. Um, Whoops. Uh, and I hope you all are, all are all looking forward to the Star Trek Beyond movie and the new Star Trek series coming out in next fall uh, or next January, I should say. And uh, so, yeah, I look forward to that and uh, hopefully it'll be good. And until then, live long and prosper and goodbye.